Buried in this hill lie the remnants of the first Fort Henry. Built to repel an invasion from the Americans, she guarded the then capital of Canada, Kingston, Ontario. The fort was an ominous sight. From the water, the uphill battle against her defenses would be suicidal. The deadly arsenal of her rear battery could begin firing miles away. Blanking her was not much better. Her ramparts were massive and studded with sharpened logs. A dry moat made scaling even more difficult. No, the only way to breach her was a frontal assault, and that would take some doing. Before getting a force to her killing grounds, an invading force would have to deal with a variety of other picket defenses, including British ships, other forts, and island martello towers. Perhaps that's why they never invaded. Like the current Fort Henry, the first Fort Henry never fired a shot in anger. The following story never took place, but displays the fort's defenses for historical purposes. The premise of this story is that the divisive forces of the American northern states came together for a final assault on Canada, a force large enough to occupy British ships elsewhere, leaving a breach for a landing assault force to get through. They had been repelled once before. The combined might of the Americas could easily overwhelm the Canadian force. But Fort Henry was not designed to attack. She was designed to defend, and in this paradigm she would be merciless. Despite being caught with their proverbial pants down, the fort guard respond to relentless drilling and go to their assigned positions, only to see a large American ground force on their doorstep. They know their existence could be measured in minutes unless they get their guns fired. But where did this assault force come from, and where is the bombardment coming from? The American field guns do not pack that much firepower. A well-armed assault force has sailed through the night and is positioned to shell the fort from the water. 5,000 ground troops landed several days before in secrecy and are now moving in force for a frontal assault. This is a bold plan that hinges on one key element, and the Americans know it. Fort Henry cannot be taken while her rear battery is firing. To this end, the Americans have built two heavily constructed mortar ships. These guns have devastating power, and given time, will destroy the fort. The rest of the fleet waits to land more troops, or provides covering fire for the ongoing frontal assault. Frontal defenses are well layered and pack staggering firepower. The Americans know losses will be heavy. The Canadians know they can only hold the advance for so long. If the rear battery does not survive, Lower Canada may not either. The order is given and all hell breaks loose. The gunners don't wait for instruction. They know their lives in the next few minutes. The mortar shells are landing closer now. 
and powerful as the mortars are, these are siege weapons and need time to do their work. Only a direct hit will take out the rear guns. The Canadian gunners turn their guns. The order to fire is given, and they unleash their awesome firepower. The rear battery is deadly active. They only need time to range their guns. A near miss takes out the rudder of a mortar ship. The ship cannot maneuver to fire her guns. Crippled, she stops firing and seeks the safety of the fleet. Other ships provide covering fire, but only the last mortar ship can take out the rear battery. Driven by the need to survive, both sides race to fire the next rounds. They both know the battle will be decided here. They must get the second mortar ship. This is a pivotal moment for Canada. The next few seconds will define Canadian snipers for the next two centuries. There is a man working at the center. The Mew had to grab me. He was closing with him. There's a two-on-one with the Mew. Then on goal, he shoots. He scores! With the American fleet in ruins, the gunners breathe again. The question now is the forward battery. The fort has survived an awful beating. Now she's on the offensive. The fort guard has taken out all major threats to her continued survival. Although severely outnumbered, the balance of power has shifted towards the fort. With no supporting artillery, the American assault has no chance. Still, the Americans advance. Soldiers now man the ramparts. At the Ravelin, fort soldiers are lined up 3D. When the order is given, they will fire volley after volley. They wait, as do the Americans. The Americans are courageous fighters and have proved this during this and other wars. But this may be a fight they cannot win. They know the rear battery is operational and can sense its menace. Their own bombardment is stopped. The troop commanders receive the news the naval assault has failed. The order is given to withdraw. The Americans will rendezvous with the remaining troop ships further up the shore. The Canadians are in no position to give chase. The ravages of time take their toll on the once mighty fort. As to the events just witnessed, a child's bedtime story. Something to amuse over a late night fire pit. Over the centuries, Old Fort Henry has had a history of apparitions appearing. Ghostly images of figures dressed in 18th century tunics. They say on warm summer nights when the moon lights the lake, the bonds between the past and present slip. People hear things. But are they hearing the laments of soldiers who train for a battle never fought? An unfinished fight, perhaps. God, it's a beautiful night tonight, honey. Keep an eye out for Rob, Rose, and Dave. 
Oh, there they are, below the fort. Geez, the fort looks odd tonight. Oh, damn, there's a big old boat anchored ahead. Look at the size of that thing. It looks like one of those older style sailboats the cadets train on. I should call the Coast Guard. This thing is a hazard. Honey, I can see Rob's boat through this boat. What the hell?